to the World Series. The Big Ten and Pac-12 Championships. The UFC. The Daytona 500. The U.S. Open Championship. The FIFA World Cup. And Super Bowl 51. The world's biggest events are on Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. All or nothing. Do or die. Winner, take all. No matter how you say it, nothing equals the magnitude of Game 7. field in Cleveland. It is a do or die game seven for these Indians and these Cubs and there's Francisco Lindor. He's been spectacular. 18 hits this postseason. Third most by a player under 23 years old. Chris Bryant, nice couple of games, huh? Two home runs, five hits the last two. Can he and the Cubs offense stay hot tonight? We shall see. What's the scene in Chicago at Murphy's Bleachers? A little go, go, go. So they're all fired up and ready to go. Dorothy, you there? Dorothy is there. The fans at Cleveland right here at Progressive Field, they are storming on in, ready to rock. Another warm November day, 72 degrees, wind, not really a factor, and so that's what we got on tap, and that's what you're playing for, the Commissioner's Trophy. What a gorgeous trophy it is. Come on into our set here at center field on Progressive Field. Game number seven. Can't wait. Frank Thomas, Pete Rose, Alex Rodriguez, Tom Verducci, and I'm Kevin Burkhart. Game seven, do or die. You guys know it well. Pete, you played in a couple of them. What's it like? Let me tell you about playing in the World Series. Okay, I'll give you a little hint about this. The three greatest days of my baseball life was winning the World Series. The three worst days of my baseball life was losing the World Series. Wow. That's what a World Series means to a player. You know, it's every kid's dream to play in a Game 7 in the World Series. I remember in 2004, uh, I was nervous and anxious the night before. You couldn't eat on the game day. And once the game starts, you kind of get going. But for me, it's the buildup. You play 200 games to get to this point. Then you create a Super Bowl atmosphere where the winner takes the pennant and the loser goes home. I only got to Game 6, but I just remember a lot of nervous energy. And the worst part was being in a hotel, watching your favorite sports programs, and you know what's at stake. That made it a longer night, but once you get into the clubhouse, Everything seems to get back to normal. But, but not like Alex. You didn't have you didn't have a problem eating that day, did you? Not at all. Okay. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> you know that. Just check. Just check. Went into the buffet, baby. Pete, <laughs> with apologies to you and the big red machine. Tonight, I think coming into the game, it's the biggest game in baseball history. I agree with you. You say you're crazy. No, think about it. Nothing bigger than the World Series. Nothing bigger than Game 7. And these two franchises combined have waited 176 years to win the World Series. Red Sox and Reds, 75, a mere 90 years of waiting. This blows anything away of what we've seen before. That's the most intelligent thing you said in two weeks. I agree with you. Save that for me, please. <laughs> Took to a game seven for you Her to finally agree. Come through. But that's the bottom line. How do we get here? Why don't we review this World Series, right? Go back to game Thank number you. one. Corey Kluber, amazing in that game. Six shutout innings, and then Andrew Miller and Cody Allen close the door. Six nothing. Indians won game one, and then Kyle Schwarber. Act 
activated after ACL surgery. He delivered in game two, drove in a pair, 5-1 Cubs, and they tie up that series. In game number three, runs at a premium. Chicago shut out for the second time in the series. Pinch hitter Coco Crisp delivered the game's only RBI, giving Cleveland a 2-1 World Series edge. And then Corey Kluber to do his thing in game four again, this time on short rest. Jason Kipnis, he would put the game out of reach here with a three-run home run and brought Cleveland within a game of the title. But hang in there because the Cubs responded in game five at Wrigley. Chris Bryant went deep for the first time since the NLDS. And Aroldis Chapman recorded the first eight-out save of his career. And the Cubs kept their season alive until last night when the Cubs' offense just erupted. Chris Bryant homered in the first. Addison Russell, he had a grand slam here in the third, and that forced tonight's game number seven. And so these Cubs looking to join this short list of teams to come back from a 3-1 deficit to win a World Series. Only three of these five won the last two games on the road. Indians manager Terry Francona looking to avoid all of this. He's standing by right now with our Ken Rosenthal. Thanks, Kevin. Terry, Corey Kluber, pitching on three days rest for the second time this series, third time in his last four starts, and yet you expect he's going to be fine. Why? Well, and it's not because it's easy to do. I'm not downplaying that part of it. I just, that's how much faith in what we think in Kluber. I mean, his work ethic, there's not a reason not to feel that way. I mean, this guy, for the last three years, has been shouldering being the leader of this rotation. Now, with your bullpen tonight, what do you expect will be your most difficult decision? Well, hopefully, it's in about the eighth inning. <laughs> now, I, you know, I get your point. Um, it, that's probably the biggest challenge. And, um, you know, because we have our ace on the mound, okay, now he is going on short rest. You don't want to get to him too early, but you certainly don't want to get there too late. So if you're going to err, I would say you probably err on the side of going to your bullpen. And that's most likely Miller, regardless of when, because he's the best we have at putting out fires. Again, the biggest thing is to, to get a lead, because as we've seen, both teams, you know, bullpens have been pretty dominating. Terry, thanks very much. Good luck. Thanks, Ken. Kevin, back to you. All right, Kenny, let's look at the pitching matchup for tonight. It is Corey Kluber. Can't be better than him this postseason. You just can't. And then Kyle Hendricks has also been very, very good. Led the majors in ERA this year. That's what we have on tap for this Game 7 here in Cleveland. We have a lot of fans, that's for sure. Certainly some Cubs fans made the drive. The Indians fans have been waiting for this for a long, long time. That makes for one rowdy atmosphere. We welcome you back to our set. So Corey Kluber, he's a great all postseason, exceptional in this World Series. And the interesting thing is, Tom, he's been exceptional in kind of two different ways. So I'm curious what we're going to get tonight. He has. And, and I know the Cubs have already made an adjustment against him from game one to game four. Remember game one, he really chewed them up with that comeback to Seamer to lefties. Well, if you watch closely, and Pete, I know you saw this in game four. Look at the lefties. This is Fowler leading off the game. He gets a little bit farther away from the plate to give room for that comeback two seamer that he can get to he started the game with a double two batters later Anthony Rizzo who loves to get right on top of the plate did the same thing he told me he felt like he was a mile away just a matter of a couple of inches but he had a base hit up the middle so the Cubs feel like they adjusted against the two seamer but guys my issue is he showed us how well he can spin the baseball you can take Corey Kluber in this parking lot in January and he'll be able to spin the baseball and to me that's the key the Cubs have to make sure that spin curveball is in the zone out of the zone there's no way they can hit it break down that tape big boy <laughs> there wow. Was. Wow. 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 points with you tonight you know to me Corey Kluber still one of the most underrated value assets in baseball maybe not after the showcase he's put in this World Series but he was a tail of two pitchers. Game one, he was all power. You know, depending on fastballs and relying on movement. Reminded me of, of a Kevin Brown in his prime. Game two, a completely different story. It was touch, it was finesse. Relying on a wipeout slider, reminding me of a young David Cohn. The question is, Pete, which Coy Kluber do we get tonight? Well, we get a two-pitch Mr. Kluber. He can throw fastballs, he can throw breaking balls. I'm not worried about rest because they're not asking him to go eight or nine innings. Uh, matter of fact, in the last two weeks, we haven't seen any pitcher even go eight innings. So if he gives us five or six innings, when I say us, I mean Cleveland, 
they're going to be hard to beat. Pete, I'm worried about rest. We know he's excellent at home, but facing a team three times in nine games and trying to beat him three times is a very difficult job for any pitcher. So tonight, I, I expect him to struggle a little bit more early in the game with the Cup hitters. Rest is just like weather. It would have nothing to do with tonight's game. <laughs> nothing. We saw it happen to Kirk Clayton Kershaw. Hey, he ran out of gas I only a little think bit. about rest Clayton? when it comes to the manager. Yes. When Kluber gets around 80 pitches. Maybe he still has control of the game. How quickly does he push the button to Andrew Miller, first one in? That is going to be a fascinating call because with everyone else, the quick hook is there. Is he going to be as quick with Kluber? I think it's going to be, and that's what he talked about with Kenny, too, in that interview. And by the way, Kluber trying to do something that hasn't been done since 68, a starting pitcher to win three games in a World Series. Mickey Lowish, the last starter to do that. All right, that's just one storyline here tonight. As Cleveland fans, they have waited a long time, 52 years for a championship. Chris, Happy for the Cavaliers won the NBA title. Thing. Cleveland legend Jim Brown will explain what a win by the Indians would mean Rest tonight. for the tires. We'll hear from the great Jim Brown Number when we 32 come back. from Syracuse. That is Jim. You are right there. Theo, Theo. Epstein. General Manager, President of the Cubs. He's saying Cubs, so Indians, Game don't 7. I don't know what you're saying. Early. What are you saying? <laughs> you think you saw something. You think you heard something. Well, look around the corner. The new Pixel phone by Google, only on Verizon. Okay, Google, show me Korean restaurants in Boulder. I found a few places. The only network that can power the first phone with the new Google Assistant, unlimited photo storage, <laughs> and a stunning VR experience. <laughs> So buy a Pixel only on Verizon and get up to $400 back. And right now, get 20 gigs and four lines for just $160 with no surprise overages. All on America's best network. This is Lulu, our newest dog. Mom didn't want another dog. She says to us where Lulu's hair just floats. Oh, help me! Mom, check this out. Wow. So for sweeper and dusters, <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Look at that sticks to this better than it sticks to Lulu. That's your hair, Lulu. Mom, can we have another dog? <laughs> Trap and lock. Up to four times more dirt, dust, and hair than the store brand. Stop cleaning. Start Swiffering. The QFC's legendary New York debut begins on FS1 with the biggest prelims card in QFC history. QFC 205 prelims, Saturday, November 12th, only on FS1. One of the great international rivalries in world soccer. There's a lot of bad blood between these two teams. Lightning doesn't strike twice. It struck four times. World Series pregame show is brought to you by the Lincoln Motor Company and the exhilarating new Lincoln MKZ. Well, Kyle Schwarber, there's Pete's buddy. There you go. Cincinnati boy, Schwarby. DH, they all hit. Second tonight for these Cubs and Indians, game number seven. Well, as we know, prior to the Cavaliers winning the NBA title back in June, the city of Cleveland hadn't won a championship in any major sport since the Browns back in 1964. The star of that team, of course, the legendary Jim Brown, who explains what it would mean to this city to have the Indians and a 68 year drought tonight. Cleveland Indians are one win away from their first world title since 1948. It has been an impressive ride through this postseason for Terry Francona's bunch. Well, when you look at the Cavaliers and the joy that they brought to the city, and you see how close the Indians are to have two world championships back to back, would energize these people tremendously. Both the baseball fans, football fans, 
Basketball fans are great fans. They deserve it. When you realize that the Indians were underdogs, it makes it sweeter. This is a team with a chip on their shoulder, and they believe they are going to be the world champs. It makes it greater. And they're going crazy at Progressive Field. And the reward is now we might have a world champion. After the Cavaliers won the title, LeBron James said, this one is for you, Cleveland. And this one is also for you, Cleveland, tonight. Cubs get plenty of attention for the World Series drought, but keep in mind of the four major North American sports. The Indians actually are third longest in the championship drought. The Cubs and the Arizona Cardinals, one and two. So, look, it's been a long time for both these teams. Here's LeBron James, who knows a thing or two about Game 7s, like the one he played in last year when the Cavs beat the Warriors to win the title. Two greatest words in sports, Game 7. Good luck to the boys tonight. Live in the moment, and the game will play itself out. Rally together. Fans here in Cleveland. They are ready to rock. I mean, how can you not be ready? It's a game number seven for crying out loud. Got to be fired up for this. And now that's what you're playing for here, the Commissioner's Trophy. These Indians have been great. We know that. They seem to be set up today, guys, right? Because you got your ace on the mound. The bullpen is completely rested. But if you had to look at a concern for Cleveland, Frank, what would it be? I think the biggest concern is falling behind early taking this noisy home crowd out of this ball game and not able to get the ball to Andre Miller early enough because it's key for them tonight for Kluber to hand the ball off to Miller to keep them close to this ball game. I think it's uh, on the offense. You got to score some runs. Uh, they got some veteran players on that ball club in Cleveland and they don't want to lose a World Series because it probably means a little more to a veteran player than all those young kids that Chicago has over there because they probably think I'm going to be back here several more times in my career. Yeah. You know, to me, it's Cleveland's defense. Very concerning last night. Um, bad defense can be very contagious. And to me, it's obvious what Tito Francona is valuing today by putting Roger Davis in center field, especially with Coy Kluber in the mound. You know, to me, Tom, it would be a tragedy if the Cleveland Indians lose the World Series because they couldn't catch a high school pop-up. Absolutely. To me, I'm looking at the at-bats offensively because I think they have been pressing as the series starts slipping away from them. Kipnis swinging the back great. He's the only one that scares me right now. But I will say this. When you give the ball to Corey Kluber, who's been your ace throughout the year, especially October, it doesn't matter how bad you're feeling. That's chicken soup. All of a sudden, you start feeling really good. Oh, it does feel better, doesn't it? To your point, just to back it up, though, Indians' first two rounds, one error, five errors in this World Series. And, of course, the big play last night didn't go as an error because the ball dropped in right in front of two fielders. So we'll see if that gets yeah. lined up here tonight. Hey, this will be the fifth time there's been a World Series game seven in this millennium. We take a look back at some of the all-time classic game sevens when we come back. We look at Ben Zobris. Boy, has he had himself a Red Hot World Series. Zobris, another big game last night. This Cubs offense here in Cleveland. These fans ready to go. We are too. We're back with a game number seven on Fox. I'm here in Bristol, Virginia. And now I'm in Bristol, Tennessee. On this side of the road is Virginia, and on this side, it's Tennessee. No matter which state in the country you live in, you could save hundreds on car insurance by switching to GEICO. Look, I'm in Virginia. I'm in Tennessee. Virginia, Tennessee. And now I'm in, uh, Virginia C. See how much you could save on car insurance. Or am I in Tennessee? Hmm. You're here to buy a used car, truck, SUV. That's smart. True Car can help. It's great for finding a new car, but you already knew that. It's also great for finding the perfect used car. You'll see what a fair price is, and you can connect with a True Car certified dealer. So no matter what you're looking for, there it is. This is how buying a used car should be. This is True Car.
furniture in Kiwani. Honest to goodness value, day in and day out. Love is learning to communicate. Doc, I sent your book to your publisher. You're welcome. You actually sent it? Why would you do something like this? Oh, my God! <laughs> and Molly tonight at 11 on Fox 18. Your full course auto source, GreenFamilyAuto.com. Three dealers with 800 pre-driven vehicles, GreenFamilyAuto.com. Get our exclusive green care. Take all the worry out of your pre-driven purchase, and it's free with our two-year, 24,000-mile maintenance program, including oil changes and tire rotation. With a few clicks, find 200 vehicles under 15,000. Plus, bring it back in three days. If you don't like it, for any reason, we'll exchange it. Come see our family at your full course auto source. Just a click away at GreenFamilyAuto.com. Don't forget, we buy from you, even if you don't buy from us. Shimano Creek RV is the largest single-point motorhome dealership north of Tampa. Like this, brand-new 2017 Fleetwood Bounder, 35-foot Class A motorhome powered by a Ford chassis. MSRP on this unit's $181,000. Sale price today at $149,995. It's a great way to save a lot of money. A 2008 Fleetwood Bounder, 35-foot, two slides, only 22,000 miles, and priced at $79,995. Shimano Creek RV, Atkinson, Illinois. The state's best television website, two years running. Visit OurQuadCities.com today. It's information at your fingertips, and it's local for you. That's a scene of aggressive field in Cleveland. Game number seven of this World Series, Cubs and Indians. And, hey, the Indians, they've been through this before, right? Time for a look back at some of the most memorable game sevens of all time. Here's a swing and a high five. will be a hero tonight for his Indians. Three hits and a home run last night. You see what he's doing in this World Series as we look at the fans and progressive field on a nice warm November evening. The temperature is so strange how warm it is, but we will take it as we swoop on in. Welcome you on back to our Set here, taking it up to a game number seven. Frank Thomas, Pete Rose, Alex Rodriguez, Tom Producci, and I'm Kevin Burkhardt. So we told you about the game seven, just showed you Jason Kipnis. How about our Ken Rosenthal? He's always a guy very busy, standing by one of the Cubs team leaders and a guy who's been pretty good, their first baseman, Anthony Rizzo. Thanks, Kevin. Anthony, this will be the third time in nine days you've faced Corey Kluber. How much do you think the familiarity will help? I think it'll help a lot, um, but at the end of the day, you got to hit pitches that he makes mistakes on so um, we have to do a good job of making him throw those pitches over the plate and not expanding and uh, but I think the guys seeing him you know for the third time in however many days is definitely beneficial to us but we still got to go out there and, and score some runs. Now as a kid you grow up dreaming of playing in game seven of the World Series. What is it like now that the moment finally is here? Um, just we got to win by all means cost. We got to score runs and, and and get that lead and hold on to it like no other. So um, it's, it's going to be a fun atmosphere, and um, I'm grateful to be part of it. Anthony, thanks very much. Thanks. Kevin, back to you. Kenny, Anthony, thanks. So here's the Cubs lineup for this game number seven, and it's exactly like it was a game six, because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They scored nine runs last night, and it did just fine. Rizzo, Zobrist, and Russell in the middle, they were all great. 
last night. Obviously, Bryant had the forehead night, and then Contreras, Hayward, and Baez at the bottom. They'd love to get some production from the bottom of the order. But look, hey, if this Cubs team is going to be weird. They're going to be shut out one night, and they drop nine on you the next night. But definitely some adjustments last night, right, Alex? Yeah, I mean, to me, the Cubs are all about discipline and keeping their chases down. Last night, they were much better. They stayed within themselves. They took their chase from 35% chase to 22. That's great. The other thing is, the Cubs happen to be in the National League, but Frank, to me, they're an American League team. One of their best hitters in Kyle Schorber. They get to put them in the lineup and not sacrifice their defense. And for me, I just think they're more confident right now and more relaxed at the plate. And that goes a long way in a short series. Ever since Chris Bryant hit that home run in Wrigley, it seems like this team woke up, which is a bad sign. You saw what happened last night. It was a 92 ball game. And you never want to see that going into a game seven. Well, the team woke up because Bryant woke up with that home run. It's and, of course, MVP. he got four hits last night. Yes. So don't expect 11 hits from two, three, four, and 5 tonight, Frank. It's not going to happen. Yeah, I'm with you, Pete. Why? Because Josh Tomlin did not have his breaking ball last night. He was hanging that pitch. I haven't seen Corey Kluber hang his curveball the whole postseason. The difficulty with that breaking ball is it moves so much. You convince yourself to be disciplined. It's harder to do. Hey, last night, the Cubs were outstanding. Last night, they got the JV. Today, they get the senior varsity in Corey Kluber. Different I, story. I will say to back up your point, here's the thing. So when the Cubs have lost, right, they're chasing out of the strike zone 40% of the time. When they've won, 30%. That's an enormous difference. Against Kluber in game number four, they chased 51% of his wow. pitches that were balls. Wow. That's a, you can't win doing that. That's the bottom line. Just remember that word. More relaxed Cubs hitters right now. It could be different. Why does it translate, though? Why does it translate? As a hitter, you want to feel good about yourself at the plate. When you feel good about yourself, you're more confident at the plate. And that's what you saw last night. You said, remember that word? You said eight words. <laughs> well, you said more than one. Huh? I'll try to what remember. What word do you want to remember? You're a mathematician now? <laughs> just, just remember, they're not the big red machine, but last well, night they looked at the bl big blue machine, and what always stops an office of avalanche is great pitching. I got a Hendrick statistic for you, Tom. Yeah. He's the fourth pitcher in Major League history to win the ERA title and pitch in the Game 7 of the World Series. Wow. You didn't even know that. that man. Wow. That, that man. man. We'll look that up. Wait, you, so you're only telling Tom we can't hear that stuff? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You I, guys know everything else. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Or <laughs> well, you think this, you do. Let's look, at, <laughs> <laughs> let's look at this Cubs bullpen. And Araldis Chapman, last couple Stat games. Man. He's been used quite a bit. 62 pitches thrown. Obviously, it was interesting last night with a huge lead coming in. And, and that is going to be fascinating tonight. Look, if we get to a situation where he's needed, how he's used, how much he can give you with all the innings that he's pitched of late are all this Chapman. And there are so many storylines to this Cubs bullpen. Indians, we kind of know where it's going, Tom, right? But with the Cubs, how long can Chapman go? Are we going to see Lester and Arietta and lacking all these guys? What's what's going to happen here? I'm glad you asked because I got the script right here. For Joe <laughs> Kyle Hendricks, you got about 90 pitches. Right out of John Hollywood. Lester, about two innings. Chapman after that. Now the issue is Lester cannot come into a game with runners on base. He needs a clean inning. Joe Madden needs a bridge between Hendricks and Lester. Probably Montgomery or Edwards. But to me, Chapman still is the key. Guys, I think despite throwing 20 pitches in game six, 42 in game five, I still think he could go all bum garner on game seven. Yes, I use that as a verb. All bum garner. That means pitch count completely out the window. Wow. I think that's what Joe's thinking too. If he wouldn't, he wouldn't have brought him in last night. Well, what does that mean? Three innings? What do, what do you I think? I don't think that far, but at least two innings. Look, I think Joe Madden has been obvious with the strategy. He doesn't trust anybody unless they have the last name Chapman or Montgomery. John Lester, to me, is interesting. I would not use him unless I had a two-run lead because of his inability to hold on runners and throw to the bases. Tonight should be all hands on deck. This is game seven of the World Series. Your next game is in March. Whatever you got to do, piecemeal, out to out, Joe Madden will have to get it done. I'm looking for a long ball game with a lot of pitching changes. Well, thanks for reminding us it's game seven. For I'm glad percent. you know that. Just in case we forgot. You know, I, it, 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 you talked about, Alex, you talked about you have to bring Lester in a two-run two game. That's the other thing. Okay, you could bring in Lester in a clean inning, 
But as soon as somebody gets gone, it's different if you're starting than, hey, if it's a 3-2 game in the seventh, right, Tom? I'm with Alex. I think Lester in a one-run game with the way these Cleveland Indians can run, that's scary to me. Don't forget, David Ross would have to come into the game right. to catch Lester. Lackey, to me, is more of an extra inning guy. You hold him out if the game goes long. You, I know you like Lackey. I like John Lackey. I like his makeup. He's a gamer. If he's got to pitch three or four outs, you're going to see that velocity increase. He's got a big breaking ball. He'll drop down sidearm. He'll do whatever it takes to get hitters out. Who's a Lackey? John Lackey. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's got a ring. I know. I got a couple of them. I know you do. Okay. Experience right Look, now. Get out of that. Get out of that. I'm area. just curious if Sutcliffe is available tonight. <laughs> seen, I mean, it seems like everybody no, he else. He takes too long to throw the ball. Uh, all right, there you Bergie go. Jenkins. <laughs> all right. So a lot more to do on this pregame show. You wonder what does 108 years of waiting to the psyche of a Cubs fan? We'll show you firsthand what lifelong Cubs fans are going through in Chicago when we come back. Also. Hall of Famer John Smoltz knows all about pitching in Game 7 of the World Series. He tells us whether Corey Kluber has enough left in the tank to do it one more time tonight. Game 7 World Series, and we're back on Fox. One day, my friends are gonna be back is this my car state farm knows that for every one of what? those moments this is ridiculous there's one of these is this my car what this is ridiculous this can't be happening this can't be happening oh it's happening sweetheart oh it's happening sweetheart shut up shut up ah! <laughs> that's why state farm is there what a day with car insurance for when things go wrong what a day. but also here with car loans <laughs> to help life go right state farm let me talk to you about retirement. A 401k is the most sound way to go. Let's talk asset allocation. Sure. You seem knowledgeable, professional. Would you trust me as your financial advisor? I would. I would indeed. Well, let's be clear here. I'm actually a DJ. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I have no financial experience at all. That really is you. If they're not a CFP pro, you just don't know. Find a certified financial planner professional who's thoroughly vetted at letsmakeaplan.org. CFP. Work with the highest standard. We are Wow, today's the big day. I can't believe that it's finally here. From the first day we met, I knew I wanted to marry Lisa. She's amazing in every way. I had to find the ring that matched her beauty, and I knew I would only find it at Neckers. The diamond and setting they helped me pick out is perfect. Now, all I have to do is pop the question. She said yes. She loves the ring, and it's all because I went to Neckers. Neckers Jewelers in Davenport and DeWitt. Give to the one you love. Something is up at IH Mississippi Valley Credit Union. IH Mississippi Valley Credit Union. Move up. in Kiwani. Honest to goodness value, day in and day out. You need to get his man his credit. He's a top five player right now. No, no, double no. He's the mentally weakest superstar we've ever seen. What will they say tomorrow on America's fastest growing sports show? Undisputed tomorrow on FS1. Tonight's aerial coverage is brought to you by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. How about Corey Kluber in this World Series? And so good this postseason. Kluber has struck out the side. Swing and a miss. Got him looking. He locked him. He was untouchable. Because we're going to be World Series history. 
saluted as he leaves. Say this, he can't be any better. Kluber making his third start of this World Series this season, including the playoffs. Look at the progression when Kluber faces the same team a second and third time. He gets better and then better with each appearance. We'll see if that holds true tonight. Fans are here. It is a hot ticket in Cleveland. I mean, the hottest here in a long, long time. With the Indians a chance to win the World Series for the first time in 68 years and win it on the home turf, which they didn't get a chance to do last time. And the guy to call that tonight, along with Joe Buck, it's our guy, our Hall of Famer, John Smoltz. John, look, you were involved in one of the greatest Game 7s of all time, and the greatest one I've seen back in 91, of course, your Braves against the Twins. Take us back to that time, what that was like for you, and what it's like to pitch in that type of game. Well, for me, I dreamt of it as a kid, and as I asked each pitcher potentially pitching in Game 7, did you dream about this? They said, absolutely. You got to want to be in this situation. You cannot be afraid to make a mistake. You can't pitch perfect. You can't think about every pitch meaning something. If you're afraid to make a mistake, you're going to be in trouble. The guy that's the most relaxed and enjoys the moment will be the guy that has the best chance for success. And you know what? See all these stats right here? They don't mean nothing. That's what Game Seven's all about. You lay it on the line and you do the best you can. Neither starter probably going to pitch in the sixth. This will be a bullpen game. John getting aggressive. I, I think I like it. I, I really do like it. Hey, let's talk about Corey Kluber. He's been great all postseason. But we've seen two different versions of him in this World Series, John. We saw the guy who threw a ton of two seamers in Game One, but then a guy that came back with a lot of breaking balls in Game Four. So which guy are we seeing tonight? Well, I think he's going to read and react. I think the biggest thing is that the first game. The, the Cubs took a lot of pitches, right? And they were burned by a lot of those two seamers. And then in the second game, they faced them. They didn't take a lot of pitches. They were aggressive. So when you read the at-bats in the first inning, certainly the Cubs know the formula for success is they must score early. And for Kluber, he's going to do everything he can to prevent that. I think Kluber just reads and reacts and doesn't overthink it. If you make good pitches against a hot-hitting team, you're going to have success. If you don't, you see what happens yesterday. Certainly worked so far. John, thanks. Have a great call tonight of this game. Game seven can't wait to hear you. All right, Kyle Hendricks will be starting opposite Kluber, starting on the road for the first time this postseason. Matter of fact, he's starting on the road for the first time in over a month. He has an ERA of well under two at home, but up to nearly three on the road this postseason. Hendricks has averaged just over five innings per start. Now look, I'm not saying he's bad on the road. He's just better at home. Fans are a little loud here. Rowdy. What an atmosphere, Kevin. It's a mix. We got we got some Cubs fans who made the drive to see which team can claim that World Series trophy. So for Kyle Hendricks, he's been great all year. He really has. He's been consistent in the playoffs. He's been consistent. Maybe just hasn't given you a lot of length. What are we getting from Kyle Hendricks tonight, Alex? For me, he has perfect makeup for the stage. He's cool. He's calm. He's collected. He has an economics degree from Dartmouth. He uses his brains when he pitches. He's a tactician. Uh, he relies on location and movement. To me, the Cubs would love six innings out of Kyle. Tom, what do you think about Hendricks tonight? Yeah, I agree with Alex that he's going to have a slow heartbeat. This moment is not too big for him. He gets weak contact, especially down and away. My issue would be length. I think he's under a 90-pitch guy. But don't forget, he won the clinching game in the NLCS against the Dodgers, seven and a third shutout innings. And if you want to go back to 2009, Kevin, he won the clinching game of the Ivy League Championship with seven wow. and a third shutout innings. <laughs> if you can beat Cornell, you can beat the Indians in Game 7. Yeah, you can. Good luck with that one. Well, one thing I never worried about was going to any Ivy League school. <laughs> That's a fact. But <laughs> he'll pitch a good ball game because he is calm. But I don't like that stat seven and six on the road. That, that kind of baffles me. I don't know why he wouldn't be a good road pitcher as opposed to being such a great pitcher at Wrigley Field. That's not pitching paradise there in Chicago. No, it's not. I just think you got to be realistic tonight. No more than five innings. If he gives you a great four with all hands on deck, he's done his job. You got to be, you got to watch the swings the Indians are getting on him, and that will determine how long he lasts in this ball game. You know, to me, the one decision, if I was manager of the Cubs, I would have started David Ross. 144 pitches per start. That's what the Cubs average. To me, that's 144 decisions. I want my the smartest and my leader to make oh. those type of decisions. It's a great point. Ross actually has had the better at bats over Wilson Contreras, but I think he just likes that combo. 
of Hendricks were working with Contreras. Yeah, well, we'll see. We might see Ross in this game. Like you said, if oh, Lester yeah. comes in, we are going to see David Ross. All right, tonight the Cubs could end, finally end, their 108-year World Series title drive. Haven't been on the brink of elimination for three consecutive games. The anxiety for Cubs fans might only last a few more hours. The tension in Chicago is palpable. I am, that's true. I was nervous all night last night and I did not get much sleep. It's hard to be extremely confident over the years. I've come so far, so fast, and it feels like a hundred years. The curse dies tonight. There's no curse. Oh, it's gone. It's done. And that Billy Goat was in front of the ballpark. I think the curse is, is old news. To heck with the curse. <laughs> We're not afraid of no goats. We're done with this crap. It's a little I think they're hyped. I think they've got the momentum they needed. Well, Kyle Hendricks is on the mound. We call him the professor, right? I got faith in the guy. He's been pitching great all year. A little concerned getting Chapman in there last night. However, they've been kicking butt. They don't get that look like we can't come back. As they say in the business, they never give up. I hope they would. Let's just put it that way. After this, it'll change everything. I can feel it. 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 Sorry, man. It's out of your hand. That's great. That looked like putty. I wasn't sure if that was putty. There it is the scene at Murphy's Bleachers in Chicago. They are raring and ready to go. As you can imagine, all of Wrigleyville in Chicago is tonight, just like it is here in Cleveland. Look at these fans. Rocking and rolling. Come on into our set. And so for Chicago, 108 years, it's a long time. That's a long time for anything. Frank, you are a Chicago guy. You've been a Chicago guy for a long time. What would it mean to the city, to these Cub fans, if it happened? You know, playing there and being there for the last 26 years, I know tonight this is the most anticipated championship in Chicago history. It's been 108 years. I think a win tonight for Chicago, this would be... You know, only only championship that can rival their biggest championship ever, and I think that was the 85 Bears. That's how large a win tonight would be for the city of Chicago. Yeah. Nobody cares about that Bear team. <laughs> <laughs> All I can say, I don't know how long it's been, but Al Capone was nine years old. <laughs> think about that. It's a long time ago. It's going to be the biggest thing in sports. Uh, it's obviously, like Tom says, it's the biggest baseball game that we've ever seen. So it, it, it's just so big for the city of Chicago. It, we just can't put it in words. You know, the entire city will have a, you know, young and old people will have a sigh of relief. To me, uh, it transcends sports. It's, it's one of the coolest stories. And to be here for Game 7, it's unbelievable. Yeah, and I agree. I think it's the biggest championship you could win in sports right now. And I think that's why guys like Hayward and Fowler and Lackey, they took less money to sign as free agents with the Cubs because there's nothing bigger than to win a World Series with a Cub uniform on. Yeah, I agree. I think it's the biggest sports story of our lifetimes. Not really smart, huh, Alex? What's Taking that? less money? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you didn't think we'd get through our last show without some money, Chad. You, you don't know nothing about that, do you? All right, let's get predictions. Who's going to win the World Series? Tom Verducci. I got to stick with it. My pick before the series was Cubs in seven. I don't know how against this <laughs> Cleveland staff, but Cubs win. Going to stay with it, Alex? Yeah, I'm going to stay with my call. Cleveland in seven. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Cleveland, but I don't have a reason. <laughs> no reason. I don't have a reason. What? I can't come up with a reason. Way to break it down. What an analyst. analyst. I'm amazed you picked again. I, I got to stay with mine. I said Cubs in seven. This is going to be a hard fight battle. We've seen it. But tonight, whoever wants this thing the most will win this thing. He said that, but he looks very sad. Yeah, he looks Why are you so sad, Pete? I really like both of these ball clubs. Okay. Unfortunately, one team has to lose tonight. Woo! There are no feelings tonight. Listen to these fans here at Progressive Field. What do you like? Field. I have no idea. <laughs> Corey Kluber getting the start. He has been unreal in this postseason. Indians, Cubs, who's it going to be? First pitch coming back on five. Everybody hates when the waiter warns them the fajita skillet is hot. 
but Arby's fixed the problem with fluffy flatbread, steak, chicken, and not having waiters. Arby's, we have the meat. You seem like nice people, so you should know. Something bad is coming to do what it was fed to do, trained to do. Strip the only home you know of is joy. Your town is going to be a very different place when I let it out to play. The new Pixel phone by Google, only on Verizon. Okay, Google, show me Korean restaurants in Boulder. I found a few places. The only network that can power the first phone with the new Google Assistant? Unlimited photo storage and a stunning VR experience. <laughs> How is this possible? So buy a Pixel only on Verizon and get up to $400 back. And right now, get 20 gigs and four lines for just $160 with no surprise overages. All on America's best network. Everybody hates when the waiter warns them the fajita skillet is hot. But Arby's fixed the problem with fluffy flatbread, steak, chicken, and not having waiters. Arby's, we have the meat. You're bigger than the game right now, rookie. Okay, guys, one at a time. You don't just ask for what you want, you demand it. This is my life. All new pitch, tomorrow on Fox. History will be made as a desperate wait for a title will finally come to an end. Two teams lay it all on the line, but only one can be called a champion. There is no tomorrow. There is no second chance. This is the moment. This is game seven. And so it all comes down to this game seven Cubs and the Indians here in Cleveland and it's time now to send it over to public address announcer Bob Tayak here at Progressive Field. And now ladies and gentlemen to honor America with the performance of our national anthem we invite the fans to sing along as we welcome members of the string section of our very own Cleveland Orchestra.
place is rocking here in Cleveland. And so here we go. It's game number seven. Joe Buck and John Smoltz have the call after this. Is your low tire indicator light on? QC Auto Service of the Quad Cities can help you. Stop by any of our convenient locations and you'll be back on the road in a flash. You love her, she loves you. Diamonds on the Avenue. How do you show her? Where do you go? Diamonds on the Avenue. When it's time to ask her, when it really matters, happily ever after starts at the home of the Wow Factor. What do you do to keep love new after a decade or two? You love her, she loves you. Diamonds on the Avenue. Time's running out to get this extreme deal. Extreme bundles with TD, internet, and phone average as low as $26.66 per service a month for a year. Enjoy download speeds up to 150 meg with the fastest in-home Wi-Fi. The power to watch live TV on every device in your home. And more choices with on-demand and TiVo DVR. Extreme bundles average as low as $26.66 per service a month for a year. Hurry, offer ends November 21st. Call 800-SIMPLIFY for details. need an oil change? QC Auto Service of the Quad Cities can help you. No appointment is needed, and we'll have you back on the road quickly. We make it here. The story behind the safety sleep Thursday on Fox 18 News at 9. Do you remember the year? That season, the Cubs, the Indians, won the World Series. You don't, do you? But this year, one city will live it. You need not remind the faithful in Chicago, in Cleveland. Dreams don't always come true. This year, they will. For those men we call ball players, for those fans in the stands, for those in Cleveland, in Chicago, Illinois, Ohio, the Midwest, the nation, and the world. With one win, one city will experience the year it finally happens as the hopes of generations come down to one game. of the 2016 World Series. And a welcome to you. On November 2nd, it's Game 7 of the 2016 World Series. A World Series that features the Cleveland Indians and the Chicago Cubs. Tied at three games apiece. And now, welcome to the broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Joe Buck. The Hall of Famer John Smoltz is coming right up. Well, those two words are pretty sweet when they're put together in professional sports, right? Game seven. And in baseball, they're just a little bit sweeter. Think about it. Pitchers and catchers report to spring training in mid-February. Fans flock down to spring training, either to Florida or Arizona, to watch their favorite teams. And then, starting in April, it's a six-month love affair with their favorite ball club. They get to know them. Players get to know each other peaks and valleys through the season and for those teams that get to October it's peaks and valleys even in the month during the early rounds of the playoffs well now here we are in the World Series and we have determined nothing in this classic series between Cleveland and Chicago tonight 176 years of combined frustration ends for one side 
I welcome in my Hall of Fame partner John Smoltz and my friend you have pitched in a game seven as a starter in your career in a World Series simply put what does game seven mean to you what's well, the greatest feeling in the world and well long before you ever put on a uniform to play in the big leagues you better dream of this moment you've got to want this moment and you can't be afraid to fail there will be a moment in this game that everybody remembers don't create it embrace it two pitchers on the mound have the perfect temperament I think to lead their team for a chance to victory these are the games you dream of playing the player that can slow it down the most will have the best success well as we look at this game specifically tonight to me it's the rested and ready Indians bullpen and for the Cubs it's about adjustments and they've made adjustments offensively they have adjusted their lineup Schwarber in the second spot but they've adjusted with the breaking balls and not chasing as much if they get mistakes and hit them they got a chance to avoid that bullpen that can lock it down for the Indians let's go down to the field here's Ken Rosenthal Joe, the Cubs have a new middle reliever tonight. His name is John Lester, and he will enter only at the start of an inning. Lester will be on just two days rest, but this is the day he normally would throw about 40 pitches in the bullpen anyway. He should be good for two comfortable innings, maybe three. And once he enters, his catcher, David Ross, will enter along with him, playing the final game of his career. Ross said that his wife, Hyla, was emotional as they left the team hotel today. Now over to Tom Verducci. Thanks, Ken. Five years ago, Corey Kluber was a 25-year-old minor leaguer with a 6 ERA. That's when he discovered a two-seam fastball, the pitch that got him to the majors, to a Cy Young Award, and now to the brink of history. He's trying to become only a second pitcher, the first since Mickey Lolich in 1968 to start and win three World Series games. Now, Kluber will do so with a team behind him that is red hot, but listen to this. This is something out of another era. Lolich did that in 1968 when there was no DH, when there were no divisional playoffs. So tonight, Corey Kluber is looking to turn back the clock. Back in 68, it had been 20 years since the Indians won the World Series. Tonight, Corey Kluber tries to end the drought at 68. Joe. Tom, thank you. Well, this place is beyond electric. Will it end for the Cubs tonight, who haven't won at all for 108 seasons of wait till next year? And for Cleveland, will they end their 68-year drought? We'll find out on the other side. It's Game 7. Red 97! Check! Red 97! Did you say 97? Yes. You know, that reminds me of Geico's 97% customer satisfaction rating. 97%? Helped by Geico's fast and friendly claim service. <laughs> huh. Oh, yeah, baby. Geico's as fast and friendly as it gets. <laughs> Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. I tried hard to quit smoking. But when we brought our daughter home, <laughs> that was it. Now I have Nicoderm CQ. The Nicoderm CQ patch with unique extended release technology helps prevent your urge to smoke all day. It's the best thing that ever happened to me. Every great why needs a great how. Let's go. Mm, I think it's time I got my turn. Gonna roam wherever I roam. I wonder how One smart I choice leads to the next. That's just how I roll. I'm gonna go my way. 2017 Ford Fusion is here. It's the beauty of a well-made choice. It's gonna be a big, wide, blue sky, sunshine, happy day. Discover Card. Customer service? Ma'am, this isn't a computer. Wait, you're real. With Discover Card, you can talk to a real person in the U.S. like me, anytime. Wow, this is a recording. Really? No, I'm kidding. 100% U.S.-based customer service. Here to help, not to sell. Question, are my teeth yellow? Have you tried the tissue test? Oh, yellow. What do you use? Crest White Strips. Crest 3D White White Strips whiten 25 times better than a leading whitening toothpaste. I passed the tissue test. Oh, yeah. Crest White Strips are the way to whiten. I was out here smoking instead of being there for my son's winning shot. That was it for me. That's why I'm quitting with Nicorette. Only Nicorette Mini has a patented fast-dissolving formula. It starts to relieve sudden cravings fast. Every great why needs a great how. It'll be the greatest adventure ever. I'm looking at a red planet. 
Mars, a global event series, Monday, November 14th at 9 on the National Geographic Channel. They call us crazy, Game seven, no tomorrow. One team will leave here a champion, the other with a lifetime of remorse. It started as a little boy, a dream, a love affair with the game. Now, the dreams of an entire city rest on your shoulders. Anticipation, excitement, anxiety, that pit in your stomach. It all comes down to tonight. One game. To walk forever in history. A World Series champion. There are many Cup fans in attendance wondering if they will see history tonight that favors Chicago. Same can be said for the hometown Cleveland Indians and their fans. This place is buzzing. It's been buzzing for the last couple of hours. But I will say this. There's also a tension here. And at times it gets a little quiet when people get overwhelmed with the moment. 69 degrees. Another gorgeous night in Cleveland, Ohio. And we give you a look at the Chicago lineup. Same lineup that Cleveland faced last night. Dexter Fowler, Kyle Schwarber, Chris Bryant. In the middle, Anthony Rizzo, Ben Zilbrist, and Addison Russell. A six RBI game six for the 22-year-old. Then Wilson Contreras, Jason Hayward, and Javier Baez. And you see in this World Series in two previous starts, that group hitting 205 against Corey Kluber. Off we go. Straight one. Fowler just four for 25 in this World Series. As we've talked about all postseason, when he gets on, when he scores runs, these Cubs usually end up on top. Ball one. That side of the plate is going to be very important. See how it's called for Corey Kluber. The first game, he loved that side of the plate and had the Cubs mesmerized, taking a lot of pitches. Ball two. Way louder last night in game six. There's a nervous energy in this park. The 2 1. That's in the air to center. Back at the wall. It is gone. What a start. Dexter Fowler, hello in game seven. One nothing Chicago. Dexter Fowler couldn't have drawn it up any better. Maybe he had a dream about that last night, but he puts it into action. It's the first ever leadoff home run in a game seven, and it belongs to Dexter Fowler. Well, he let the moment and the count come to his favor. He's not afraid to take pitches, and you got to believe they're willing to make adjustments. When you see a guy for the third time in a really short time, you watch film, and at some point you got to take away what they did best. And he was patient, got the pitch he want, and drove it over the center field and won.
last night Chicago came up with three runs in the first inning led seven to nothing as people were just settling in now here comes a one one to Schwarber uh -huh. in for strike two. Well Kluber gave up a run early in his last start in Chicago and that was the only run he gave up. That's not going to bother him at all. Yeah it's a leadoff home run but I promise you that's not going to shake his confidence or his pitch selection just because the first hitter tally to run. Here's a one two. That's Kluber off the mound can't get to it. What a play but safe as Lindor couldn't get Schwarber. One on nobody out. And bad knee and all Kyle Schwarber down the line to beat the throw from Lindor. Well you got to believe look how far Lindor's coming from the shortstop side in the shift bare hands it and tries to make a miraculous play because he was playing so deep and over out of position Schwarber uh, he can do no wrong right now five for 13 now in this World Series. And again, a guy who thought his season was over on the 7th of April when he collided with Dexter Fowler in left center in Arizona. Tore two nick ligaments in his knee, and man, what a comeback story. Here's Bryant. Bryant went deep last night in the first inning, and we remind you for coverage of this game in Spanish. Please tune to Fox Deportes. Everybody knows what's at stake right so there's tension on both sides and you need tension breakers right there you can see what the Cubs have done when they score early you can see the freedom in their at bats when somebody gets a big hit early they know what's in front of them and that's in front of them is the bullpen for the Indians good pitch from Kluber strike two Corey Kluber is starting for the third time in nine days. Four and one this postseason overall with an ERA of less than one. He's been Cleveland's ace. Indians ask for another good one. Out of the right hander and that's just inside for ball one. That's a great pitch. He could have got the call. It's a taller Bryant. But after sending him two pitches away he has basically as has everybody else thrown about 80 percent breaking balls to Chris Bryant this postseason lately he got hot and hit one of them for a home run yesterday a one two two balls two strikes a four hit game in game six he's hit a home run in two straight games Chris Bryant and the first Cub with home runs in back to back World Series games. The 2 2. Full count. Yeah, underneath this cutter right here, you see it sail above the strike zone. I would think that even though it's a 3 2 count, he's going to have to throw his power breaking ball. This is the touch pitch you need. This is decision makers 3 2, aggressive hitter. High fly ball into right center sends Chisholm Hall back and allowed first out here in the first and we go back to how it started with Dexter Fowler at the plate well this is that two seamer comebacker and that's exactly what it did but it fought right to the barrel he knows he's hit it good he doesn't know how good that balls up in the air a long time and then he almost starts running backwards letting everybody know here we go and just out of the reach of Rajay Davis a first inning run now one on one out for that guy Anthony Rizzo who's digging in right now Man, you, could, you could read his lips we needed that he said that repeatedly and that's exactly on the road you'd love to strike first the Cubs have the last couple of games Schwarber at first one out Rizzo all one up. 
Anthony Rizzo has been hot. Last 10 games, he's hit three home runs, hit 410. And last night, for as good as Chris Bryant's game was, well, he was just one notch below. Three hits and a two run home run. In the air to shallow left center. Long run Davis. He's there. Two out. One more time the home run. Well perfect swing. Good balance. You see the follow through and then about four or five feet over the glove of Davis. Fowler hadn't done much up until that point, but what a perfect time to do something. A leadoff homer in the world game, game seven. Hitting 160 coming into tonight in this series. Now two out, Schwarber at first, Zobris up, and Schwarber takes second base and was over halfway there before Kluber lifted his leg for the pitch. And a stolen base for Schwarber. Well, you know, Kluber is the last thing on his mind, and he's already committed. The catcher maybe could have helped him out, but that might have forced a balk. That is a big jump. Now Zobrist, who's been red hot, takes the ball low, one ball, one strike. We came into this series talking about the running game and how it was such an advantage for Cleveland. They've stolen four bases, been caught twice. The Cubs had 10 steals this postseason, haven't been caught yet. Not typically a huge part of their game, but they'll take them when they're there, and that was there for Schwarber. 1 1 pitch to Zilbrist. Got under it, flies it into right. Chisholm Hall is there. And it's a one run first. And it started with a bang. Dexter Fowler, the leadoff man, his second of the series. And back in his way towards second base. And exciting the fans at Murphy's Bleachers in Chicago. After a half in game seven, one nothing. Cubs on top. When you have four legs, you really appreciate the seventh inning stretch. And it gives me just enough time to keep tabs on my money and banking. With my Bank of America mobile banking app, I can see my accounts all in one place. I can easily manage them, and if something doesn't look right, I'm going to know. Plus, I feel secure because I can set up alerts to help detect unusual activity. So I always have my eye on the ball. Oh, man. Typical. Whoa, the holidays are coming. You're right, we need to get ready for the big show. What's up, dudes? Lots to do. Hey, Iron Man, can you run it for the lights? You got it. Thanks. Way to assemble, guys. What's up, most motivation? Um, fun. <laughs> got it. Excuse me. Coming through. Oh, hey. What do you think? Tall enough? Taller. Definitely taller. It's starting to click, guys. Woo-hoo! Yes! Whoa! We're gonna make this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Spectacular. Critics are calling, thrilling. It's Marvel's most daring creation yet. I even impressed myself. Dr. Strange, read a PG-13. Be the first to see it tomorrow night. Yeah, just text me. You're gonna get a text. This must be what Antonio Brown feels like in the end zone. This must be how Lucas felt when he got Katie's number. Pepsi. Tonight's telecast is sponsored by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Now Cleveland coming to bat. And they take on the young right-hander Kyle Hendricks. Top three, Santana, Kipnis, and Lindor. In the middle, it's Mike Napoli, Jose Ramirez, and Lonnie Chisenhall. 
The back end of it, Rajay Davis gets the start tonight. Coco Crisp is in left, batting eighth, and Roberto Perez in that number nine spot. He's hit two home runs this World Series. Now the defense behind Kyle Hendricks. Zilbrist in the outfield in left. Fowler in center, Hayward in right. Around the infield, third to first, Bryant Russell. Baez and Rizzo. Again, it's Contreras behind the plate. And Chicago is pinning its hopes on the right arm of the 26-year-old calm and cool Kyle Hendricks. Yeah, Mr. Under the Radar. Nobody talks about him. And yet, all he's done is put up those numbers and the regular season numbers. Now, the challenge for the Cleveland Indians is I think they need to be aggressive. Throw pitch counts out the window. But you've got to get the ball up. He can throw that changeup, cutter, and curveball below the zone. That's in the air to right, but right at Hayward. And what a bad break for the Indians as Santana smoked it. But I think that's the approach. He throws more strikes than most pitchers in the game, so the best pitch to hit sometimes is the first one. I think the Indians have seen him now multiple times, and they're going to have to take away his changeup. First pitch, good swing, and a good feeling, even though it did not result in a hit. The batter will be Jason Kipnis. Kyle Hendricks has thrown... 15 straight scoreless innings this postseason coming into this start. And the kid who grew up a Cub fan is trying to ruin the night for a lot of his boyhood friends. Talking about Kipnis as he takes on Hendricks. Took a strike. And now the next. Strike two. He just does a great job with an easy motion, not overpowering fastball, but two fastballs. A sinker moves away from the left-handers. A cutter more straight keeps the hitter from diving out over the plate. His changeups are virtually unhittable when thrown properly, both to a left-hander and a right-hander. Ball one. Hendricks started this season as the number five man in the rotation for Joe Madden. He led the big leagues in ERA at 2.13. Up to the number two spot, and in the biggest game of his life, a strikeout for out number two. Look at the company he's keeping with this streak he's on. Lou Burdett and Bob Gibson. With the longest scoreless inning streak entering a World Series Game 7. It's amazing, and there hasn't been, at least I haven't heard a lot of talk about him. It's all about Kluber, and rightfully so. Kluber, the best pitcher for the Indians, pitching three times. Well, the Cubs have not used anybody on short rest yet of their starters. So that's that balance we were talking about coming into the series. And if it goes to seven, that was going to be the storyline. Lindor takes right. a strike. Over 68% of the time, Kyle Hendricks threw first pitch strike. And he's done that to each of the first three hitters here in this intense game seven. That's Baez. And from a knee, a bad throw is safe. And Baez... Rushed it a bit, didn't get up, and that cost him. Well, you're going to see his back foot slip. Watch his back foot. He loses his back foot even more when he goes to throw. See it slip right there? And that slip cost him to be a little bit off balance. We've seen him throw a lot of unorthodox throws and right on the money. But that little knee and probably a little wet grass right there, that is all it took with a change-up grip that he threw, and it sailed. So it's an error on Baez, his third of the postseason, first of the World Series. And the defense for the Cubs has been so good. Napoli will try to make Chicago and Baez pay for that. Two out. Another uh -huh. first pitch strike. Yeah, and all pitcher wants to do badly is pick up his teammates because his teammates pick him up all year. And so, as Kyle Hendricks knows, the biggest thing he's going to do is just execute pitches. Well, Lindor does some landscape work in the area where he's going to take his lead. Lindor, a guy who runs, he stole 19 during the regular season. He's only been successful once this postseason, been caught three times. To the shortstop, broken back, inning over. And Hendricks made that look easy, got around an error, and after one in game seven, on a home run by Fowler. Cubs lead 1-0.
do you become America's number one? Start by taking care of families for 70 years. Earn the trust of 32 NFL teams. Be there for America's toughest. And help when help is needed. America's number one is in a status earned overnight. It's earned in every wash and re-earned every day. Tide, America's number one detergent. Mercedes-Benz winter event. That's the look on their faces that makes it all worthwhile. But hurry, these offers end soon. I've had a wonderful time tonight. Me too. Call me tomorrow? I'm gonna send a vague text in a couple days mm -hmm. that leaves you confused about my level of interest. I'll wait a full two days before responding. Perfect. <laughs> We're never gonna see each other again, will we? No, no. Wouldn't it be great if everyone said what they meant? The City Double Cash Card does. It lets you earn double cash back, 1% when you buy, and 1% as you pay. The City Double Cash Card. Double means double. Wear with the best wear. MLBshop.com. The series is sponsored by Chevrolet, the official vehicle of Major League Baseball. Chevrolet has earned more 2016 J.D. Power Dependability Awards than any other brand. Learn more at Chevrolet.com. This is the epicenter of the sports world right now. Progressive Field in Cleveland, Ohio. Place is jam-packed. And here in the second inning, it's Addison Russell, Wilson Contreras, and Jason Hayward against Corey Kluber. Strike one. Well, Kluber's been so good. And look, he throws two breaking balls. They're actually the same pitch. One he calls, or some people call a cutter. The other one is more of a slider. They classify it as a curveball because it breaks so much. But he basically determines the break and the reaction of the hitter. So he'll throw a tight one at 90 and another one about 84, 85 to 86 miles an hour. A one pitch. Russell last night hit a ball into right center in the first inning that fell between... Naquin and Chisenhall that went for a two run double. But then he pounded a grand slam through an exit out in left center field to make it seven to nothing. His next at bat. He takes up and in two balls and a strike. And this 22 year old is getting hot over his last nine games at 324. And Joe Madden has shown him more and more confidence by bumping him higher in the lineup. Gets under it, and on the infield is Lindor to his right. I'm going to bring Ken Rosenthal in here as we tell you the home plate umpire is Sam Holbrook. First base umpire is Chris Guccione. John Hirschbeck is the crew chief. This is his final game. Marvin Hudson at third. Tony Randazzo is in left. And Joe West is in right and Ken Rosenthal it's been a long career filled with a lot of ups and downs for John Hirschbeck 34 years Joe and he lives in Poland Ohio about 80 miles southeast of here he's endured tragedy physical hardship throughout his career lost two sons to a deadly genetic disease missed one season due to back surgery twice returned to umpiring from cancer his older son Michael frequently served as a bat boy for the Indians and also was one for the Red Sox when Terry Francona was their manager. Michael died at age 27 in April 2014, but John came back to the job he loved. He'll be missed as Contreras flies one into right. Chisholm Hall over near the line. Foul ball, two out. Well, the first inning, Kluber was not as sharp with that cutter. And he's made adjustments here in the second inning. He's been underneath a little bit of the fastball. And that's to be expected from time to time when you're rushing into three starts in a seven-game series. But as I mentioned, the home run did nothing to bother him. He'll get back on track if he keeps his hand on top of the ball. Just been underneath just a little bit early. Hayward now actually had a couple of hits against Kluber last time Corey faced Chicago at Wrigley Field in game four. 
And he shatters his bat, pops it up to Lindor, and that is a quick top of the second. Bottom of the second with Ramirez, Chisenhall, Davis coming up for the Indians down one. So what's your news? Uh, I got a job. All the programming at GE. Oh, I got a job too. At Zazzies. <gasps> the app where you put fruit hats on animals? I love that. Guys, I'll be writing code that helps machines communicate. I just zazzied you. <laughs> Look at it. Oh. I can do dogs, hamsters, guinea pigs, you name it. I'm going to transform the way the world works. I program that hat, and I can do cassava melons. I'll be helping turbines, power cities. I put a turbine on a cat. Oh. I can make hospitals run more efficiently. This isn't a competition. I did not email any um, classified material. Really? The FBI said that there were 110 classified emails that were exchanged. Hillary lied. And another lie. I respect the Second Amendment. But behind closed doors, Hillary told liberal elites... The Supreme Court is wrong on the Second Amendment. Hillary will lie about anything to get elected. The NRA Institute for Legislative Action is responsible for the content of this advertising. Troll fever. Party on the top floor. It's 90 minutes of pure happy, and the world has never needed it more. <laughs> That's your happy show? It's been a while. DreamWorks Trolls. Slap it, boss. Okay, fine. Too slow. Classic. Now I'm thinking we hug. Ready, PG. This is it. This is the holy grail of, of championships and, and all the sports. That's what we're here to do. Bring it. Bring it. Nothing game with LeBron looking on. Akron native. And here he is cheering on the Cleveland Indians tonight in game seven. First up. All one low to Jose Ramirez. And this guy would be tough for me to figure out. He hasn't looked off balance all series. He has been one of the better hitters all year for the Cleveland Indians out of nowhere. There's a strike from Hendricks. We talked about how he hit 219 a year ago and just has made himself a tough out. Hit 312 during the regular season. And up on the count here, 2 and 1. Yeah, I mean, certainly each hitter will show you some some weakness, right? You got to expose it. It's up to the pitcher to get there, but he has done a nice job eliminating some of those boxes that a pitcher can go to. That misses for ball three. Chisholm Hall and Rajay Davis to follow in that last pitch. Not called a strike, so the count three and one. Full uh -huh. count. It's just hard to shake. It's hard to shake Hendricks, even the spatial features. Everything he does, he's get very disciplined and confident in his routine. Russell can't make the play. Lead off base hit. Speaking of confidence, this kid is confident and he's a tough out. He just stays in there. He doesn't overswing. And on a 3 2 count, some hitters try to get a little too anxious and try to make something happen. He goes right back up the middle and deflects it off of Hendricks. Too much spin for Russell to try and barehand. They see that ball spinning. Do or die play. Can't make it happen. It actually hit off the right side of Kyle Hendricks. Looked like he got his glove over there. And then Russell couldn't do anything with it. So leadoff man is on. And here's Lonnie Chisenhall. He's won for his last 24. Over all this postseason hitting 200. Ball one. 
Chis Chisholm normally a pretty aggressive early count hitter after the base hit again to approach a Hendricks because you're sitting at home and you're going that doesn't it's 88 if you try to pull him, you're in trouble you've got to have the approach up the middle the other way to have success if he does make a mistake in and then 89 looks a lot faster than your typical 89 and you see Chisholm Hall can't get around on it one ball one strike well the perception he gives the hitter is when it comes out of his hand it's a ball and then the late movement makes it a strike nobody greater in the world than Greg Maddox at doing that and then he can throw a complement of the curveball change your eyes change up change the speed and then the cutter off of the sinker we've already seen Kyle Hendricks has a great pickoff move He's a good athlete. He's a terrific golfer. Doesn't really love to play that much. Doesn't like to practice, but one of those naturals. He's got great feet. And he showed that with a pickoff of Lindor. Here's one there, and he got him. Hendricks gets his second of the World Series. And he erases Jose Ramirez as he caught him. He changed up the timing. Each hitter has a rhythm. They get a little hop step, and as he starts to move, watch him pick. And it's too late right there. Quick feet, gets a great throw, and of course, Rizzo does the rest. Just that little lean cost him. With one out now, a 1 1, base hit to left. Off the bat of Chisholm Hall. You know what you're thinking at home. Now it's first and second. Nobody out. Not necessarily. It changes the pitch selection, too. Nobody feels worse right there than that young man trying to get an aggressive lead, possibly go. So Chisholm Hall is on. And with one out, the batter will be Rajay Davis who has saved all of his hits for this World Series this postseason three out of twenty nine overall three for seventeen in this World Series he had a big game five a couple of hits three stolen bases he can fly it's gonna be tough Ryan Baez. he got them both and a five four three double play from Bryant to Baez to Rizzo. And the Cubs are firing on all cylinders. A clear out at first and after two. One to nothing Chicago. of nature or a sales event the season of audi sales event is here audi will cover your first month's lease payment on select models during the season of audi sales event yesterday the wizard entered new york with a case full of magical creatures and unfortunately some have escaped this could mean exposure witches live among us look this could mean war. Time is running out. Fantastic Beasts. Rated PG-13. Experience it in IMAX. Introducing the new Xbox One S. The only console with 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray, 4K video streaming, and high dynamic range gaming. The new Xbox One S. Smaller, sleeker, sharper. The ultimate games and 4K entertainment system. Xbox One S, starting at $299. So can I redeem my rapid rewards points at any time? Any way you want it, that's the way you need it. Any way you want it. Thanksgiving. Fourth of July? Yes to any seat, any day, any time. Just the way you want it. That's transparency.
What about this guy? This guy's been through a lot. Dogs bring out the good in us. Pedigree brings out the good in them. Feed the good. Series on Fox tonight's telecast is presented by T Mobile One. T Mobile lets MLB fans always stay connected to the game they love with unlimited LTE data. Welcome to Unlimited Baseball. Well, this February, after the Super Bowl, the clock resets for more 24. We've got a new day and a new hero. Corey Hawkins stars in 24 Legacy, premiering right after the Super Bowl Sunday, February 5th on Fox. Super Bowl 51 coming your way from Houston, Texas in February. And during the break, starters, mainly the guy pictured there, John Lester, heading out to the bullpen in case he's needed. Baez with a big swing, strike one. I, I'd be surprised if John Lester doesn't pitch in this game. Yeah, but the situation is going to have to be right. Everybody assumes that John Lester, as good as he is and as great a year as he's had, he does have some weaknesses that regard the stolen face. So if the game's close, I don't know. Baez takes a ball the other side of it is if you bring in Lester, you bring in the guy wearing a microphone for us tonight, David Ross. Those two are a package deal. Yeah, no doubt. And certainly they're going to start him in a clean inning. They won't, I, they won't bring him in in the middle of an inning. Baez hits one in the air to left. Didn't get all of it. And Crisp has out number one. Dexter Fowler with a leadoff home run in the first inning. Had seven leadoff homers in the regular season. Third most in Cubs history. Statcast powered by Amazon Web Services. 406 feet. Four hundred and six big feet. The last and only other Cub leadoff home run in their postseason history over 110 games. As Fowler rips one into right, but Chisholm all over to grab it. That ball was smoked. The only other leadoff home run in Cubs postseason history, Bobby Dernier. And he was here last night, and I would bet that if he was here last night, sitting with John Cusack, he's in the park tonight. That was in 1984 NLCS Game 1 against the late Eric Shaw and the San Diego Padres. You know, we saw those pitchers walk out to the bullpen. There's not a greater walk in the world than trying to get ready to pitch a Game 7. When a starter walks out to get ready for that game, all his thoughts are by himself. All those memories and things that he thinks about when getting ready to pitch in a Game 7, that's much different. That's a nervous feeling. That's I'm ready, but I'm nervous because it's out of character of being down there. You're used to being in the clubhouse and the dugout. And certainly this is one unit that realizes everybody's available in a game seven. Like a greeting line down there for Arietta and Lackey and Lester. Here's a shot into the right field corner by Schwarber. He's thinking too. The throw by Chisenhall. Schwarber out to end the third. What a throw by Lonnie Chisenhall on one hop and the tag by Lindor. Bottom of the third. Indians batting down one. What are you doing right now? I'm looking at my cake. Uh oh. I don't see cake, I just see mess. It's like awful. It feels like I'm not actually cleaning it up. What's that make mommy do? What's that? Swift for what, Jack? <laughs> this is amazing. Whoa. Wow. Now I feel more like making a mess is part of growing up. Only new WetJet pads have absorb and lock to soak up tough messes and lock them away. 
Stop cleaning. Start Swiffering. Hey, man. Why aren't you streaming my game? Uh, hey, Bryce. I can't. Yeah, I've got Verizon, and I've already reached my data limit. You know this is the postseason, right? Yeah, I... You could be missing a classic. You're killing me, man, but... Look, more data would cost me a fortune. What if I just hit a walk-off bomb? Nah, you didn't. Did you? Why pay more for data limits? Introducing T-Mobile One. Unlimited data for everyone. Get four lines, just 35 bucks a month. Welcome to Unlimited Baseball. Let me talk to you about retirement. A 401k is the most sound way to go. Let's talk asset allocation. Sure. You seem knowledgeable, professional. Would you trust me as your financial advisor? I would. I would indeed. Well, let's be clear here. I'm actually... A DJ. No way. <laughs> I have no financial experience at all. That really is you. If they're not a CFP pro, you just don't know. Find a certified financial planner professional who's thoroughly vetted at letsmakeaplan.org. CFP. Work with the highest standard. You don't just watch TV. You love it. They're your shows. Watch them your way. Hey, this guy gets it. Get the new episodes the day after they air. Past seasons, too. Oh, that show be all right. Plus originals and exclusive series. The shows they're talking about. The ones they're texting about. Movies, their TV, too. Don't forget the kids. What's up, guys? What's up? It's your TV. So's this. And this. And right now, you can get Hulu for just $5.99 a month. Don't just watch TV. Make it yours. Hulu. Come TV with us. Hillary Clinton won't change Washington. She's been there 30 years. Taxes went up, terrorism spread, jobs vanished. But special interests and Washington insiders thrived. Donald Trump will turn Washington upside down day one. Real change that puts Americans first. A vote for Hillary is a vote for more of the same. A vote for Donald Trump is a vote for change that makes America great again. I'm Donald Trump and I approve this message. It's almost Christmas when decorations go up. My husband's gonna kill himself. Nothing like positive reinforcement for the holidays. That's not good. Almost Christmas. Radio PG-13. In theaters November 11th. Welcome back to Game 7 of the World Series. A look from up above as Coco Crisp digs his way in. Bottom of the third inning. Number eight hitter for Terry Francona. Strike one from Hendricks. The Cubs are only the ninth team to crawl back from the 3-1 deficit and force a Game 7. It includes a Game 8 in the 1912 World Series in which there was a tie in Game 2. That misses. The five teams that have come all the way back to win, three of them did so by winning Game 6 and 7 on the road. Yankees in 58 over the Braves, 68 Tigers over St. Louis, and 79 We Are Family Pirates over the Orioles. That's down the line. Chris will dig for two. Zobris gets it back in. Double. Well, I told you, you got to go the other way. You got to take what Hendricks gives you. If you try to pull and get aggressive, they're outs. You go the other way, there are hits. Chris was lucky he didn't get hit in the head on that little soft toss back from Russell. So now we'll see how Cleveland wants to play it. The number nine hitter, Roberto Perez, just walked down to Mike Sarbaugh, the third base coach, and was told verbally, not through signs, what to do here. Cubs are expecting the bunt. Yeah, Rizzo way in, almost on the mound from the distance between the catcher. You can see he will cross the face of Kyle Hendricks with Bryant backing up to the bag in case there's a play. And now time called by Contreras. And Perez goes down to get more instruction. Yeah, good pitch there. He laid off of it. Thought maybe that could have been a strike, but ball one count. See if that changes. There'll be a, a, a bevy of instructions here, maybe if it gets to 2-0 and oh, or if it's 1-1. One and one. But so important, this will be the toughest game period that each manager manages. And especially for Terry Francona with the weapons that he has, the opportunity to use them are so enticing. That being the bullpen. 
the bunt. Rizzo will go to first. One out, tying run at third. And a good sacrifice by Roberto Perez. And I think Rizzo made the right choice. Yeah, it's a good bunt, but watch how fast Rizzo. You'll never see any other first baseman cover the third baseline. He's fearless. He gets in, and as a left-hander, he has an easier advantage to third if he chose to throw to third. But he thought wisely and got the sure out. Keith Hernandez was pretty good at that play. Left-handed first baseman, one of the best ever. Rizzo got the out. Indians got their runner to third, one down for Carlos Santana. He's hit three home runs this postseason in that pickoff play. I don't know of a team that uses this more than the Cubs. With catchers throwing behind base runners at first, second, and third. Infield in, and they play Santana to pull. He does. Tie game. Game of execution and adjustments. Santana off of Hendricks. Hendricks, a lot of curveballs against Santana. This one got up. He didn't miss it. Got it over Rizzo. Outstretched glove. And what a better feeling for the Indians early on here, tying it up. Now Kipnis. Ball one outside. Jason struck out his first time. Is coming off a three hit night with a homer and a double last night. Kip was almost looking right there. You could see he was a little frustrated. It looked like he was sitting off speed. If you sit off speed, you're able to look curveball and change up. This a change up and a hanger. But it moves so much, you can see the facial reaction. Santana with a small lead to go ahead, run it first with one out. But that list Snyder, Campanella, Stargell, fourth player with multiple games with a double and a home run. Two and one, and the crowd is finally in. Full throat. Two one. Two and two. This inning, Hendricks has gotten some pitches above the knee. Not typically good for him. He likes to work down, and as he works down, he can throw that change up away and get him starting to get out in front to try and catch their cutter or fastball. They are up in the Chicago bullpen. Mike Montgomery, the lefty. Left side, and they turn it again. Bad bounds. What a play. And out. That's going to be reviewed. That hit the lip, and instead of an inning-ending double play, Baez tried to barehand it. I don't think ever had it, but out was the call for the moment. It'll be looked at. And it did hit the lip. Baez tried to rush it, and everybody's going to be safe. Well, there is a transfer rule that umpires have become that they think and that's with the glove but this one's with the hand it's not close so Baez has made one error tonight
Hendricks got what he, what he wanted, except what he wanted, except that bad hop, and that's what threw that whole play off. You remember I said there's going to be a moment in this game. Don't try and create a moment. Embrace it. Take what the game gives you. If you try to do too much, the chances of making mistakes go greatly against you. Now he may have tried this play a bunch of times in the regular season, but he's trying to turn two. Get the out. Get the out. Know what the speed of the runner is and the circumstances because I guarantee it's sped up for Baez right there. They're still looking at it. Takes his eye off it as well, looking toward first base. Here comes the call. And Hendricks, not much of a reaction, but disappointed. Everybody's safe. Two on, one out. Second error of the night for Javier Baez. And the three, four batters coming up for Cleveland. Opportunity. Lindor in the earlier matchups got pitches over the plate that he was able to handle. Let's see if Hendricks tries to tie him up with the cutter and get him with change-ups. Two base hits last time he faced him. Ball one. There he tried to go in exactly with the cutter. If he can establish the cutter in, then he can front door that two-seam sinker and get him looking once he's established it. He was hoping to do that right there. comes Chris Bazio. This game seven may be hanging in the balance right here with the state of the Indians bullpen. While they talk on the mound, we remind you official caps, T-shirts, hoodies, jerseys, jackets, and more. Get all your Cubs and Indians World Series gear and celebrate your favorite team at MLBShop.com. Now Carl Edwards Jr., the right-hander, joins. Well, we've already seen some outs on the bases. A pickoff. I don't mind Schwarber going for second with two outs. That's okay. And we've seen some misplays. Two zero, three and zero. Let him swing on 3-0. Yeah, the problem with that, though, is too good of a pitch. It was a pitcher's pitch. you got to think in the middle end, this is a pitch you've got to drive if you're going to swing 3-0. Watch the location of it. See how it's outer third? That's something later on in your career. you just got to be disciplined to see the inner part of that box and then let it go. 3-1 pitch. That's in the air to left. Zobrist in. Stumbles a bit. The runners hold, and a big out picked up by Hendricks. As he battles back from a 3-0 count on Francisco Lindor, two out. Again, trying to pitch around an error as he did back in the first inning. And again, it's Napoli standing in his way. Well, if Hendricks wants to stay in, in this game and provide more innings for the Cubs, that 3-0 comeback and getting it out is essential. You know your leash is short. And the one thing you can't do is show any cracks to give your manager the reason to take you out earlier than he wants to. So far, Mike Napoli has been held in check in this World Series. One of two guys active in this game tonight who's experienced a game seven. Takes a strike. He did so on the losing end in 2011 with Texas in a game seven loss in St. Louis. 
Well, Hendricks has picked his spots, only thrown him a couple fastballs, and then goes to off speed. I don't know if Napoli will be able to sit on a changeup. Strike two. And a bruise. Hendricks pitching to stay in the game. More importantly for Chicago, pitching to keep it tied. Napoli chokes up. 0 2 pitch. Ball one. There's the changeup. He threw him six in a row between two at bats the first time they hooked up. He's got a changeup to righties that goes away, almost cuts. He's got a changeup that fades away from left handers, so this fades into right handed batters. Hard hit right at Bryant and a loud third out, and a bad break for Napoli and the Indians. And the kid, Kyle Hendricks, pitches around another error and keeps it tied as Napoli hit it right to Chris Bryant. Game seven, why shouldn't it be? Tied 1 1 after three. You're broken down and tired of living life on the merry go round. And you can't find a fighter. But I see it in you, so we're going to. Ever since Star was little, she believed her name was who she was. The minute I heard that girl sing, it made me feel we got the makings of a super group. Stay away from those girls. And we'll rise up. I like the waves. We'll rise. This is your dream. Babe, this is my dream for us. We'll rise up. And we'll do it about Your mother and I had the same dream. And that dream killed her. I'm nothing like her. She grew up in foster care, and everything she's been through is in her voice. Some people, no matter what they were born into, were meant to be so much more. Star. Special premiere after the Empire Fall finale on Fox. against the aliens. They're not our enemy. You want to stop them? Find out what this means. Korea and Russia are off the grid. I know what it is. Arrival. Rated PG-13. Discover card. I'm not a customer, but I'm calling about that credit score card. Give it. Oh, sure. It's free for everyone. Oh, well, that's nice. And checking your score won't hurt your credit. Oh! I'm so proud of you. Well, thank you. Free at discover.com slash credit scorecard, even if you're not a customer.